So a sick patient is coming your way, and that's not a problem because you are a resuscitationist, but this patient is a child. So that means that your resuscitation skills still apply, but the doses of medications and equipment are going to be different. They're smaller. The first step in taking care of this patient will be determining a weight. Can I just weigh the patient directly once he arrives, you think to yourself? No doubt that is the most accurate method, and you might be able to do that if you have specialized equipment like a gurney with a built-in scale, but you'll have to have an empty gurney that's already been zeroed, and nothing else on the gurney when you weigh him. Also, you'll have to wait until the patient arrives. It's stressful to spend the first few moments of a resuscitation messing around with the scale. You may just not have time for all that. You need a method to estimate pediatric weight. There are a handful of them out there. Let's look at some of the options. The most common in the United States is the Braslow tape. To use it, first you have to have it. You can buy it online. Remove it from the sleeve, lay it out, and align the top of the tape with the child's head. Stretch it out to the heel and mark where the heel lands. At that part of the tape, you'll find an estimated weight and doses of common medications. It's limited to patients under the length of the tape, which is about 147 centimeters. That's roughly the height of an 11 year old. There's a good body of literature that supports the accuracy of the Braslow tape, at least for American kids. In addition to requiring that you have the tape, you also have to have the patient, so you won't be able to prepare medications or equipment in advance. You can also use an age-based formula. There are a ton of them out there, and new formulas are described all the time. The problem is you have to remember them, which is difficult during a resuscitation when you're stressed out. You know what else is hard when you're stressed? Math. You could also ask the parent how much he weighs. Some studies show this to be very accurate, but sometimes parents just won't know, or they may not even be there yet. Another weight estimation method is the finger counting method. It was developed by Alson Inaba, a pediatric emergency physician from Hawaii in the early 1990s. He's the genius behind the use of the song Staying Alive to guide compression rates in CPR. Dr. Inaba created the finger counting method based on the median weight by age from the CDC's growth charts. To use it, count age and odd years on one hand, and then weight starting at 10 kilograms and increasing by 5 kilograms on the other hand. So on the left hand, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 years, and on the right, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 kilograms. Remember to start the weight at 10 kilograms and not 5 kilograms. So for example, let's say you have a 5-year-old patient. 1, 3, 5 years, 10, 15, 20 kilograms. So your five-year-old patient weighs about 20 kilograms. If you have a patient with an even age, for example, four, you would just split the difference of the weights on the adjacent fingers and you'd come up with 17.5. To simplify, you might just use 17 or 18. The finger counting method is as accurate as the Braslow tape in American kids. We like the finger counting method because the only special equipment it requires is your hands. It doesn't require that the patient be in front of you, which means that you can estimate the patient's weight before he arrives. This might be useful if you want to calculate some doses of medications that you might need while you wait for the patient. It's also not a formula. Okay, it is a formula, but you don't have to remember a formula in order to use it. It is limited to patients between the ages of 1 and 9. Dr. Inaba did expand the method to estimate weights of children who were older up to age 15. To do this, you continue to add 5 kilograms until the patient becomes a teenager when you start adding 10 kilograms. The problem is it becomes less accurate. There's more variability at these ages because of puberty. It's also more complicated to remember, so it's easiest to just stick to ages 1 to 9. Plus, you're going to run out of fingers. You're probably better off just asking the parent or the patient or getting a real weight. This takes a little bit of practice, so try it out on the next few pediatric patients you see who aren't in critical condition and see how close it is. We think you'll like it. Okay, so what if you like the finger counting method, but the patient is younger than one? If the patient's younger than one year, there's a simple rule that can help you estimate weight. A full-term baby usually weighs about 3.5 kilograms. That is worth memorizing. That newborn usually doubles weight by six months and then triples weight by one year. So if you double 3.5, you get seven kilograms. And if you triple 3.5, you get 10.5 kilograms, which is pretty close to the 10 kilograms that you get from the finger counting method. 
Besides resuscitation, there are other reasons to be able to estimate pediatric weights. Having an idea of what a child should weigh based on their age might help you pick up a pounds to kilograms error on a chart. Pediatric resuscitation is weight based. Most of the time you won't know the child's weight ahead of time. But now, the next time you have a sick pediatric patient, you'll know how to estimate a weight. Then you can move on to the actual resuscitation. But you may have to explain why you're counting on your fingers first. <laughs>